For professional advice with a personal touch, consult F.L. Fuller Landau, chartered professional accountants and business advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Good evening. Welcome to today's Entrepreneur presented by FL for Lorlando, a program about, about the entrepreneurial spirit that drives Quebec business. My name is Dan Delmar along with FL Montreal's Josh Miller. Good evening, Josh. Hello, Dan. And this evening we're going to talk about uh, sports, actually, uh, or specifically sports equipment with Dominic Chiarello of Rocket Sport. Uh, they made the news a few years ago because they had a really novel invention and uh, now it's a business. You know, have you ever played hockey, Dan? Have you ever gone uh-huh. off the ice and a little sweaty and smelly or used other people's? Uh, well, he finally has the, this product that, that really took off over time and uh, really helps in the hockey world. Not only that, but uh, not only hockey players, but uh, might affect some mascots too. We'll hear about that coming up. And tax partner Ernie Furt will be along later in the show to talk about online sales. Very confusing, too. Um, you know, when, when do you charge tax? When do you not charge tax? It can get complicated. And if you're selling a good or, you know, a good or product, that's great. But if you're selling a service or you're selling an online intangible, it could get a little tricky. So nice to be back. Let's start with uh, news and notes on the entrepreneurial scene. Uh, first, you want to talk about Facebook. And they have, I mean, Facebook is in the news almost daily with various issues. But uh, they had a, some data loss recently. And this is, you know, for, for those that used to listen, uh, we had every now and then our twiddle notes, our this week in data loss. And uh, so we haven't. it's been a while since we've had something. But I noticed this past week that uh, Facebook has, it's been announced that it's basically storing Hundreds, hundreds of millions of user passwords in a plain text that's accessible to anybody. Well, I don't want to say anybody in Facebook, but lots of people in Facebook. They have 20,000 or, or however many people that they have. And this is even going back six, seven years ago that they have this, uh, that they learned that there were all these passwords just stored in a regular data file. So it doesn't mean that they were used. They've done whatever search or whatever investigation to hopefully make sure that they're, that they're, you know, tons of engineers uh, that, that work on, on data and security and the internet of things and, and all the big data haven't used it or breached it. So they haven't found any breaches or loss or sharing of that data. But the fact that it's accessible to all Facebook employees Maybe that shouldn't be. So, uh, as always, we always say, keep changing your password. Keep changing your password. Pain in the you know where, but keep changing your password. And I'll also mention that there are services out there if you have many passwords and many databases and things like that, or if you're handling a lot of stuff for other people. There are companies, uh, one that, that I've used recently is called Identity Guard, and it basically scans all of your profiles on the internet on a regular basis, and it reports to you if there's been any leaks. So I think that's that's tools like that are tremendously useful. It scans the dark web, too, so it scans all the sketchy sites. And so if you do have uh, some kind of uh, sensitive data that you're, you're trying to protect on a regular basis, sites like that, I think, can um, can really help uh, make sure that, that all your information is safe. And if you're afraid of forgetting passwords and use the same password for everything, which you shouldn't do, well, just get a password keeper. There's a, there's so many apps out there that you can save your different passwords everywhere. So there, there's lots of easy applications that can help you avoid these problems. Yeah, and don't make your password 123456, which is like the most common password. I think, right? That's why I add 789. <laughs> oh, you're really out, out playing them there. And a dollar sign. <laughs> uh, let's talk fast food now. Burger King is uh, making a bold move. They are. So how many times have we seen uh, a subscription type uh, subscription type uh, service? You know, uh, SaaS, this, the software as a service. So Burger King really stepping out of the box. They are taking their coffee world, and instead of saying, instead of like, you know, the McDonald's of the world say, come in for the month of April, it's a buck of coffee regardless of the size. They're saying, come in, and it's a $5 per month coffee subscription. You pay five bucks a month, come in and get your coffee throughout the month. Hmm. Why? Because who cares about the coffee? It's the upsell. It's once you're in there, what else are they buying? What else are they buying that contributes to the bottom line? So they are currently trying to disrupt this industry and saying, okay, let's bring them in the door with something really cheap, you know, five bucks a month. You can go to Starbucks and pay five bucks a coffee. Yeah. Might be better coffee. I don't know. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I can't comment. But bringing them in the door, five bucks, are you really going to lose a lot when coffee is, you know, cost pennies on the cup? Really, it's it's. Uh, I think it's a brilliant move. It's an, it's just a different way to bring people in the door. As Dan, as we always say, you got to find a reason to get the customer in the door. Mm-hmm. Once they're in the door, yes, you got to find other ways to keep them there, other ways to spend and buy the product. But if you can find a way to get them in the door, 
fantastic. So kudos to Burger King on this. I'm a big fan of lost leaders uh, giving away a little bit of yourself in order to promote the rest of your products. This would be an example of that, I guess. Absolutely. And when we later on the program, when we talk to Dominic Torello of Rocket Sport, we're going to learn from him. Give to get. He definitely gave a whole chunk before he started getting back. So it's uh, it's it's an aspect that's worth doing. Okay, we're still sticking with fast food now. Uh, McDonald's bought a startup. Why? They did. They bought a tech company. Why? Well, what what do all companies want to do? They want to be able to predict their customers' future purchases. Data. They want to they want to attack and say, okay, what can what does Dan what does Dan Delmar want to eat next to McDonald's? Well, I don't necessarily go to McDonald's. Maybe you don't either. Mm, but no. <laughs> no, exactly. That's how you keep your svelte physique. Exactly. But they so they bought a tech company to capture that that captures that data that can predict future purchases based on past purchases. Because every time you go in there, they are recording something. Do they know it's you? Not necessarily. But are but if people are actually ordering before they get there because McDonald's is promoting that app, order before you get there, drive up, they can go into your parking spot. So they're starting to collect a lot of data. Why wouldn't McDonald's spend a few hundred dollars, which, you know, is a lot of money to us, but not necessarily to them, to really capture that data and predict future purchases? Burger King's trying to get them in the door with a cheap amount. McDonald's says, you're already in the door. We already have you. So let's try and target what we think you're going to buy next based on your history. This is all fascinating. Do do you think at a certain point retailers are going to be overwhelmed with too much data? I mean, at a certain point, you're going to have to have you're going to have to rely on your intuition and your uh, your creativity and your marketing. Yeah, I, I actually was just going to go into McDonald's because it's breakfast all day, so I was going to order an egg McMuffin and a Sunday and see how they process that for how I want to eat next. Hmm. But yeah, there's there's certainly algorithms out there that want that can that can predict because people are kind of predictable you know you 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 buy certain things one way you're gonna continue to buy them another way uh, and you're probably gonna continue on that front from uh ink.com the story of amazon um this is uh an interesting one and it's also a story about when a company gets too big it starts to get kind of a target on its back well first first i'm, I'm going to give you some staggering numbers you know everybody hears amazon you know jeff bezos uh, it's, it's a huge company he's one of the wealthiest men in the world if not the here are some staggering numbers about amazon they sold in 2000 this is all 2018 numbers they sold 807 million books plus 560 million ebooks they sold almost 1.4 billion books last year they do 520 over 520 billion in e-commerce that's 45% of the entire industry ebay is at 6% walmart's at 4% they're at 45% it's staggering 100 million prime subscriptions prime you want to get your your free fast delivery subscribe to prime you want to get involved in their in their uh, their shows that they're putting out subscribe to prime so 100 million prime subscriptions putting it behind only netflix that has 139 million and Netflix kind of been around a little bit longer. 80.4 billion of cloud computing because it's all this stuff is stored in the cloud, so they use a whole bunch of that. The next closest is Microsoft, and they're about half of the half of the amount of computing. So it's it's and the the last stat I'll give 70 billion in online apparel sales. That's 35% of the US market. 35% is Amazon. The next number, the closest, the number two is Macy's at under 9%. Absolutely staggering numbers. So some of the, some government officials are saying, are you too big? Do we need to look at ways to break you up? Are you, is it fair for the customer? Is it fair for the consumer? Is it fair with all this information? So you're going to get too big. Government's going to keep looking. This has been talked about uh, with with a lot of the fang companies, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is running for president, is campaigning on this. What do you think is is um, is a good argument for breaking up a company when it's getting too big? Like, how do you determine if it gets too big? I guess the question is, in whose viewpoint? Are you looking at the consumer viewpoint or are you looking at competition like other other businesses? Compete? National interest, I guess. So. National interest. Well, you have the, you know, you're, you're at least, if we look at the Canadian market, at least Half of the GDP is based on small business. Can small business truly compete with the Amazons of the world from a price aspect? Probably not. I would say most definitely not. 
can they compete from a service and, you know, specialty and niche? Absolutely. But if you're trying to protect the small business, then I would say these companies that are getting too big and can offer too much, that could hurt the economy. From a consumer standpoint, great to have all that offering. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult F.L. Fuller Landau, Chartered Professional Accountants and Business Advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Inspiring stories from outstanding business people, Dan Delmar and FL Montreal's Josh Miller with you for today's Entrepreneur. And let's welcome in our guest from Rocket Sport, Dominic Sharello. Welcome, Dominic. Uh, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Great to be here. First question, Josh. First question, the hardest one. I never remember it, Dan. Every week, I just have to it's go tough back one to my to notes. Tough yeah. one to remember. Dominic, as we, uh, as we ask each week, just so the listener kind of understands the business, what is Rocket Sport? Well, Rocket Sport is a brand, uh, is a brand name um, of our products, which essentially are equipment dryers. Uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I launched a, the, this product, and it was started out as a portable dryer for uh, hockey industry so that when kids played at a hockey tournament, they could bring a dryer with them that would set up in a few minutes in their hotel room, and an hour after their hockey game, they could have dry equipment. Dry equipment, dry, hopefully less smelly equipment, right? Well, the objective is to dry it and kill bacteria. So uh, by killing the bacteria, you're killing uh, any smells that are developing. Now, Rocket Sports started when? Uh, 2010. How did it come about? Like, how did you, would, is this something that you've seen in the market or just like, how did it happen? How did it strike you? Well, you know, I, I come from a hockey background. Uh, I, I played professional hockey. Uh, I coached 10 years in the, in the West Island. And I even had a, a goaltender school for 10 years. And during my whole life, there was never a way to dry your equipment. And at that, you know, when I was younger, I didn't play hockey as much as they do today. Uh, most of the advanced teams play three, four, five times a week. So they're getting into wet equipment uh, time and time again. So uh, I, I've been in uh, the promotional business for 30 years. And uh, about uh, over about 12 years ago, I was in China and I was doing my business in terms of promotional products, baseball caps, bags. And I happened to see on one side of the venue a company that was involved with uh, drying devices. And I saw something that I thought, wow, you know, this could be the solution to uh, wet hockey equipment that uh, everybody's been looking for for years and years. They weren't, now they weren't drying hockey equipment. So no, not at all. This came into you. So did you have to adapt the technology? Well, first of all, they were really designed for uh, dress shirts. It was uh, for climates like the Philippines and, and Thailand, Malaysia, where uh, hotel employees would uh, work and get sweaty. And then during, you know, at lunchtime or halfway through the day, they would pop these uh, shirts, uh, work shirts into the dryer. So it was very flimsy. It was all plastic and it really didn't support anything. Um, so yes, we definitely had to modify what was the initial idea. Now, what was, what was your experience? I know we've had a number of entrepreneurs on the program and they deal with some suppliers in China. What was your experience in adapting that technology? Was it easy, difficult, as long as you had the right specs, they were doing it okay? Uh, anything you learned? Well, first of all, uh, obviously, if you're selling in North America, United States, Canada, uh, everything has to be uh, certificate, certified uh, for electrical standards. So CSA, UL, or ETL approved. And I'd have to tell you about 99% of the factories that could make our product uh, were not uh, following these standards. And, you know, you, we can't, you know, any of the buyers that we were interested in, in sports experts or Costco, the first thing they would ask, CSA approved, uh, UL approved, ETA, ETL approved. So if you don't have that certification on your product, they're not even going to enter entertain your product. So that was the first obstacle was to find a factory that aside from making the product for us would make sure that electrical uh, wise uh, it's it met its standards so that it wouldn't burn down somebody's house. So a novel idea, people in hockey really love it, but it's it's not just the convenience of drawing the clothes out. There there are health issues as well with with this product, right? I mean there's there are reasons why you need the product to dry out to avoid uh, sometimes uh, epidemics. There have been epidemics. Oh, absolutely. There's many cases. I mean, a perfect example, you look at a pro hockey player like Marion Hossa with the Chicago Blackhawks. He had to take his retirement in the prime of his career because his equipment was giving him over the years uh, skin rashes and infections. So... I've come into a lot of circumstances, whether it be an amateur player, uh, a pro athlete football, a pro mascot, uh, where 
their equipment has actually given them uh, skin rashes and infections and actually led to a point where them questioning that they had a serious, serious health risk uh, by getting a, a staph infection. And you know what? When you get hospitalized in the hospital in quarantine for a day or two, you start questioning, like, what is going on right now? And this all happens from dirty equipment or a dirty uniform uh, when you're sweating and you've got an abrasion on your elbow or you've got an abrasion on your foot. Next thing you know, this tiny microscopic bacteria gets into your skin, your bloodline, and you know what? You're in the hospital in quarantine. It's very, very surprising. So you're working with China, and I guess you have to create some type of prototype. You have to show it to potential customers to make sure that they want it. How was how was that? What did, what did you learn? What can you what can you tell us that you learned from dealing with Chinese suppliers and building a prototype? Well, I think the first thing is that um, you have to explain to them the purpose of of what you're trying to achieve. Uh, you know, it's your product as opposed to what they're trying to do. Um, and I and I explain to them by showing them equipment and 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 actually bringing equipment to China to show them how heavy the things that we wanted to dry involves. So, N- not a big hockey community back no, then. No, not well. Now it's growing, but yeah. b- back then uh, they, they you know they didn't know what hockey was. There was field hockey. That's about it. So they needed to know what my needs were uh the temperatures that i wanted uh the time the the timing dial whether it's an hour long or two hours long um and then also the most important is the strength issue will the pole support it will the rack support it uh you know things like that and as the product developed, we actually, in the last couple of years, uh, in, put a ultraviolet light in it. So that was our last inv- uh, involvement because the first uh, five or six years that we had the rocket dryer on the market, it was a basic model, which was just you know 70 degrees Celsius heat, which would burn bacteria. Now we've got the uh, extra feature on all our different dryers where that the last 10 minutes of the drying cycle has a UV light, which is another bacteria killing feature. Now, there, you know, we've also often heard relationships relationships are hugely important uh, of course any, anywhere but when you're dealing in china if you to minimize you getting screwed uh, you need to have the, have those relationships what's oh, been your experience? absolutely uh, you know i i'm really fortunate that whether it be my promotional clients or my you know, factories that uh, work with me on my rocket dryer i have a very very strong relationship with them they they look at me as family uh, they don't look at me as a dollar sign uh, and i think what happens is when you go there and you spend time with them and you 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 connect with them uh, have suppers together with them have lunches together with them stay in the factory. I mean, you know, the factory workers would see me in the factory all the time. You know, they'd smile at me, wave at me. They, you know, they would see that, you know, I get my, my fingers dirty, that I'm like watching every step of the production process from, you know, the motor assembly to the parts, to the packing, to the shipping. So they realize that I have a, a vested interest in my product and I, and I'm not a, you know, a, a part-time uh, client in the sense that, you know, you never see me, I'm in Canada and, you know, all my business conducted by, by emails or, or, uh, you know, voice over IP. I actually go there. I spend a lot of time there so that they feel I'm part of the family. Physical presence always been huge in China. But now that we've developed the product, now you got to sell it. So when we come back, we'll talk about marketing and what you kind of did to get that product off the ground. And a big PR boost, too. I'll ask Dominic about that. Dominic Chirello of Rocket Sport on Today's Entrepreneur. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult F.L. Fuller Landau, Chartered Professional Accountants and Business Advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Welcome back to Today's Entrepreneur, presented by F.L. Montreal, a program about the entrepreneurial spirit that drives Quebec business. My name is Dan Delmar, along with F.L. Montreal's Josh Miller, and our guest this evening is Dominic Chirello of Rocket Sport. Uh, you may have heard uh, or seen the story in the news a few years ago about the Dominic's invention. It's a dryer for hockey uh, and other sports equipment. And, and Dominic, I remember the story uh, when it came out in Montreal, and you got some really great local coverage, probably on CJD and, uh, and other <laughs> stations too. And I thought to myself, wow, what a, what a great shot in the arm for, for a new business. Um, and and PR, as as you know, as I know, can can do that sometimes. How did you get that good PR? And and did you use a professional, or did you do it yourself? Well, a lot of the marketing, social media, I actually uh, do myself. I have a couple of people that you know run our website and uh, in, you know involved with that. But um, I, the most important thing that I did is to start uh, the project off right was uh, grassroots marketing. And I figured, you know what, you got to get to the hockey moms out there. And um, one of the things that I did, aside from getting to the hockey moms and the social media side of that, was to get myself involved with the Canadian Women's Hockey League, the CWHL. Uh, at the time, the team was the Montreal Stars. 
Uh, I originally had gotten to know about the team by uh, meeting Carolyn Ouellette, uh, sponsoring and giving her prizes for her hockey school. And after our relationship grew, I, I started to fall in love with uh, the team and I started w- working with the team as a sponsor. And within a month, I said to Carolyn, let me talk to who runs this league. I'd like to get involved with the CWHL right across the board. And, and we became, for about four years, a sponsor to all the teams so that all the players were using our products and uh, they were, uh, you know, for prizes, you know, during the periods they were offering our products. So it was a great way to uh, get the name out there in a fast way. And, uh, you know, with great athletes uh, like these players that end up on Olympic teams, uh, you know, for Canada and USA. And you, was it, was it, could you, did you measure how much you can get from it? I know it was great for visibility, definitely the beginning. Did you continue to give away product throughout the years? Well, you know, we stayed with, uh, we, we started working with CWHL at uh, 2012. Uh, we put in, you know, we put in a good run with them at uh, four years. Uh, and I have to tell you, it was a good investment because, you know, the girls are well liked, uh, especially, you know, on the more popular teams and the, and the more popular players. Uh, you know, I would bump into people out in, in public and they would say, oh yeah, that's the dryer. I, I heard about that. You know, uh, Carolyn Willette has it on her website or, you know, this player has it on their website. So um, they had a good following in terms of, you know, the, the public and it was a great way to get the name out uh, quickly. Does it help when you're you're distributing and you're in the, the bigger stores, you know, whether it's the sports experts of the world or whatever, that must help as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, these people see what's in the media and they see that, uh, you know, a three-time or four-time gold medalist Olympian is using your product. Um, it doesn't matter that, uh, uh, you know, it's not an NHL goalie or a player. You know, these players that have put in 14, 15 years of their life to play for a national team have won gold medals, silver medals, world championships, Olympic medals, and they're praising the product, saying, you know what, I use it after every practice, I use it after every game. There's a lot of credibility there. So spokespeople or influencers, you're you're convinced on that this is a good idea for marketing. And and have you have you noticed tangible bumps? Like if you if you had these these people on social media posting about you, have you noticed a bump from that? I, I wouldn't say a bump per se. You know, uh, you know, I'm not Jennifer Lopez or one of these you know famous uh, rock stars where you know a hundred million followers. The thing is, it gets the name out there. And while I'm in tr- in my travels, uh, you know, I'm at hockey events. Uh, I'll be part of a hockey, and they'll say, "Oh, I know the rocket dryer. My son has a rocket dryer. My husband uses a rocket dryer." Uh, you know, like I I told my whole team about your rocket dryer. So things like that happen all the time. I mean, I I got you know the nickname Rocket Man because the product became uh, you know so you know well known. And, you know, then, you know, other than Elton John, you know, I was the, you know, I'd walk into the dressing room of my own team and the, Hey, rocket man, how's it going? Rocket man. Some of the girls in the uh, CWHL used to call me the rocket man as well. So, you know, the name got out there was a great name. It's a great name as well. Uh, but definitely, you know, this, these people, you know, uh, promoting it and, and, and praising it definitely helped out. You told, you told us a story off air that LinkedIn helped you find one of your distributors. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I, I use all social media platforms. I use LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and you know what? Uh, by, by coincidence, somebody had read a story about my uh, dryer. He was in the field hockey business and his friend was a field hockey distributor. Uh, he was a coach, but his friend was a field hockey distributor in Amsterdam. And you know what? To make a long story short, within a month or so, this guy ended up buying, we ended up making a 220 volt version of our rocket dryer shipped directly from China right to the Netherlands. And you know what? This guy was great because he dealt with the national teams, and you know, within uh, within a few years, uh, the goalies of the uh, the women's field hockey team uh, were using our dryers at the London Olympics, and then win the gold medal. It's interesting because you you know you you start with ice hockey, you know, you're talking about field hockey. It's moving to there's definitely other other products, other other businesses, other services, other people that could use this. What else have you found that's that it's kind of evolved into? Well, sports for sure. You know, there's a lot of sports like field hockey and, and football that wasn't really my target market, but it's grown into that because those those equipments are always used in the wet. Uh, aside from hockey, that's sweat in. Uh, football equipment like that is in wet environments. Uh, one area was mascots. Uh, we, you know, from our pro contacts, uh, trainers and, and, and management, uh, I was introduced to mascots in the NHL and they were like, you know, we have a problem too. Uh, we sweat and we're doing 20 events a week and we're wet and disgusting as well. 
well and we need to dry out our equipment uh and so i started with the los angeles kings mascot and you know he ended up introducing me to the whole nhl so that almost every mascot in the nhl uses my dryer and then in turn those guys introduced me to their friends who are in the nba and mlb and nfl so you know it's a small fraternity of 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 mascots and they all talk to each other and one guy says i found a solution for my wet equipment or my wet uniform they tell two friends and then so on and so on so but you do stay actively involved and and you're always physically present you don't just let it ride no, you you know what? You have to reinvent yourself every day. I attend mascot meetings every year. I present, uh, you know, the health benefits of dry uniforms and equipment. And a lot of these mascots have come and told me that they ended up having a staph infection, that they ended up in the hospital uh, because of not drying their uniforms properly. So as soon as they've found a solution with my dryer, uh, you know, they praise it. They don't they, they don't leave home without it. Now you're you're selling through distributors. But have you also started to sell online? We started online a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, just under two years ago. Uh, we have a pick and pack operation in Montreal and uh, have also a pick and pack operation in Champlain. So uh, we offer all our products online, all our, our dryers, our soaps, our sprays, our floor mats. And obviously, you know, during the years, you know, uh, we have to have replacement parts. So a full line of our products are available on our website. Do you find, did you have to make a conscious effort to have the right pricing so you don't compete with the retailers you sell to? Uh, well, first of all, our prices are, are, are shipping included to compete in the industry. Uh, and for sure, our prices are not going to be lower than our, our, our clients because, you know, that was the reason why I was uh, skeptical about going online is I didn't want to hurt our loyal followers, people in Vancouver, people in, you know, across Canada and U.S. that supported us from day one in 2010 and have been top sellers over the last nine years. So, yeah, we structured it so that our prices didn't ever compete with them. Tough to build that e-commerce part of your website? Uh, not so much hard to do. I was just hesitant because I was always, I was not wanting to interfere with my clients, but you know what? Over time, my, my, uh, webmasters and my e-com people said, you know, either you got to jump on this wave or you're going to left behind because the stores can't service every door front, uh, because there's not a store in every community. So finally I said, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to do it and, 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 and we'll roll the dice. I'm happy that I did. No, I, I think it's great, and uh, e-commerce is such a big topic. Uh, we're going to continue with that. Indeed. Coming up next, Ernie Furt, tax partner on online sales and how to navigate those uh, sometimes troubled waters. That's on the way. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult F.L. Fuller Landau, chartered professional accountants and business advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Inspiring stories from outstanding business people, Dan Delmar and FL Montreal's Josh Miller with you, speaking with Dominic Chiarello of Rocket Sport. His one piece of advice for today's entrepreneur is on the way. But first, we welcome back Ernie Furt, tax partner at F.L. to talk about online sales. Hey, Ernie. How you doing, Dan? Good. How are you? I'm well. So, Josh, all kinds of different rules, right? I mean, depending on what country, what province, what state you're shipping to, there could be all kinds of snags. And, of course, what are you selling? Are you selling a software? Are you selling a membership? Are you selling an actual product? There's there's lots of lots of crazy things uh, spinning in the head. So, Ernie, I'll kind of uh, ask you to lead it off. When, when somebody comes to you and says, well, we're selling online, what's the first few thoughts that come into mind? Well, the first thought that comes into mind is actually – if your if your computer system can handle it because people will go online and they want to make sure that they're going to be paying what they're supposed to be paying where where they're getting delivery so you want to make sure that your your system can handle a multi currency uh b multi tax rates so you know if you're not ready don't do it because it could be a massive mess and there's there's difference when you're selling product it's pretty easy there's a shipping where you ship to so your your sales tax, if we're talking Quebec, Canada, your sales tax is pretty clear. It's pretty clear. It's based on destination. Okay. So, you know, I, I can buy a gift uh, for, for my cousin in Toronto, but now I'm going to pay for it here or off of my visa card. But I'm going to say ship this to Toronto or ship it to BC. And it's based on the destination of shipment. It's not based on the, the person paying it. Now, what if they're buying an ebook, or what if they're buying a membership somewhere? Then it gets a little more complicated. There's no physical shipping. There's no physical shipping. There's, there, there's varying rules for books are tough, okay? Because there's provincial sales tax on books. Some books are exempt from tax, 
and you know we, we were working with a few companies who were selling online books, uh, teaching books, uh, texts. It, it, it all depends, and because sometimes if there's a hard version of the book and there's an ISBN number, there may not be tax. It, it is you know in certain places there is tax. There, there's certain places there's rebates that you have to do. It you got to really know your business. If it's a simple business, like I'm selling a a widget. Okay, that's not a problem. That's easy to easy. Once you're starting selling services and whatever, it's usually based on the billing person. Okay, who, who am I billing? Because you don't really know where that service is going to be used. Uh, so, so you have to you know try to figure it out. So the only way to figure it out is if I'm buying like an antivirus software. Uh, they see and know one thing: my credit card. They know where that credit card is attached to. So they, they will bill based on the location of that credit card. It's the easiest way to go, and it makes sense. Right, but there's also uh, technology today. You can track the ISP. You can track, uh, you can have geolocation software so that they know, even though they might have a credit card in the States, if they're physically buying it in Ontario, you can see geolocation software. So there is some sophistication. You, you, you got to be careful. You, you got to be careful with that because there's a lot a, a lot of software that people will buy, you know, the software as a service, stuff like that, that you have to, that have license agreements that say you cannot use this in. So that's something to be careful of when when you're looking at software as a service. If you're sending your widgets to many countries throughout the world, is it the entrepreneur's responsibility really to track all the latest developments and policy changes in all those countries? Or do you have a turnkey software that'll do all that for you? Well, there's certain softwares that can do that for you. Um, but sometimes they're not as up to date as you would want them to be. Your best bet is to check with a local accountant who specializes in the area. And, uh, you know, I can tell you everything that you want to do with Canada. I can tell you where to be careful when you go to the States. I can't tell you what, you know, what jurisdiction in the States in Colorado, there's different, there's five, six different rates based on the destination. Let's talk to somebody in Colorado. We want to know where you're shipping the most to. Let's deal with the ones that are that you're shipping the most to where there's the most risk. If you're going to Europe, I will introduce you to somebody in Europe, and, and they will also do the same thing, and they will go locally depending on, on, on what it is because there's different VAT rates. Last year, there was this whole Wayfair case that came out yep. about online sales. Last Can you June. elaborate on that? Basically... Uh, there used to be something called a physical presence test in the States. And if you didn't have a physical presence in a particular state, uh, you didn't have to charge the st- particular state sales tax. So, you, you know, you, you're, you're selling a cell phone online, for example, and, and uh, the guy can go to the local, the, the, the local Best Buy and, and buy a cell phone. And he's going to have to pay the sales tax because he's sitting in North Carolina and he wants to purchase that cell phone. But, uh, you know, if that cell phone company doesn't have a, a place in North Carolina, then the cell phone company ships that cell phone there. And then you're kind of responsible to self-assess. So each state tax return has a place that you could put in something called a use tax. Now, unless you're running or expect to be running for president of the United States, very few people actually fill this line in on the tax return. They'll put a token amount because you could be living next to a no tax state where you're going to go buy stuff because you, you don't want to pay your local sales tax and you know the state next door doesn't have a sales tax so you'll go running and you'll go buy it and, you're, and they're kind of looking for a little something you know give them a token uh and there's also you know that the, the, the we have a lot of the the, the, the e-tailers that that are busy and amazons and and and, and all of these guys and, and kijiji soon they're going to start issuing slips we're, uh, and we're talking online sales and taxes and all that with Ernie Furt, one of my partners at FL. Dominic, you know, you've recently gone into the e-commerce. Did any of this scare the living bejesus out of you? Well, you know what? I In Canada, obviously, as, he was, as Ernie was saying, you know, we have a different tax rates because we ship to Ontario and BC and 5%, 13% HST. So we're well aware that accountants set that up for us right away. Uh, the e-commerce is pre-programmed for that. Uh, in the U.S., uh, you, know, we, we, you know, we're sending to U.S., so we don't, uh, there's no taxes involved with that. Uh, but again, our, our e-com site is based on, uh, is, uh, based on, you know, as soon as it, it goes into a Canada, U.S., you know, the tax 
taxes are applied uh, as soon as that country or those provinces are, are specified. And we'll get your one piece of advice in a moment, but I guess uh, final thoughts, uh, Ernie, online sales and, and, and I'll, selling out. Listen, because of that Wayfair case, Recently, I've been getting a lot of calls from the U.S. because they're scared, and all of a sudden, they've all found God, and they all want us to register. They all want us to do their sales tax properly, but if you're doing that, wherever you go, whether you go to the States, whether you go to Europe, whether you're a non-resident who wants to come to Canada, speak to somebody who knows what they're talking about. Don't speak to the local customs broker. Don't, you know, don't speak to, to don't even call the government because I because the, the Canadian government gave some advice that I was just laughing. It was just hysterical. It was completely wrong. So speak to somebody who knows. But it might have been good for them. Uh, for the Canadian government, no. It was actually good for no one hmm. and uh, really bad. Uh, at the end of the day, speak to the person that knows, let them set you up, and do it right. Definitely uh, tough tough to navigate and online sales. Uh, it's here. It's happening. So you might as well go and do it. Thanks very much, Ernie. And as we approach the, the last moment of our show as we do each week, uh, we'll turn to our guest, uh, Dominic Chirello from Rocket Sport, and ask you, Dominic, what would be your one piece of advice for today's entrepreneur? Well, you know what? Uh, you alluded to it earlier in our conversation, and it's all about relationships. And I think that in today's world of technology, emails, uh, text messages, we live a very uh, impersonal life. Uh, and so what happens is I still believe uh, in the traditional way of relationships. So you have to show up your face, and that's not only to your clients. It's to your factories, uh, people that work for you in China. Uh, it's it's to it's to the athletes and people that uh, that support you, and honestly, even to your bankers and the people that finance uh, finance you. I work with BDC and uh, TD Bank, and I tell you, I have the greatest reputation with all these people. Even my patent lawyers, they all praise my product. They talk about my product, and that's all because of relationships, getting in people's faces, having that connection with them, and getting away from the impersonal emails and text messages. So it's all about relationships for me. Thanks very much, Dominic. Dan, my my quick takeaway. Uh, in addition to what Dominic was saying was, you know, keep your eyes open. You never know what you're going to find when you're looking for something else. And that's how Dominic found Rocket Sport. And look where he is today. So thanks very much, Dominic. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Dominic Shirello of Rocket Sport. Ernie for tax partner at FL. Thanks, guys, uh, for chat. Yep. Great. Thanks. Back next week, Josh, with uh, a distiller. A distiller. Artist in residence distillery. Should be fun. All right. Don't forget today's entrepreneur.org with uh, a decade worth of entrepreneur profiles there. Visit the website. And we'll see you back here next week. Have a good night.